Hey guys, I'm really excited for this episode, so I'll tease you a little bit on what it's about. So you're probably already running it on a daily basis or invoking it more appropriately. It's similar to Korn's work, this guy, not these guys. And it's a new project, even though it was released in 1989. And I bet you use it every day on your Linux box. But what is Bash, really, and what makes it so awesome? Stay tuned to find out. Oh, and thanks for putting up with my absence while I'm in the Philippines. I hope you guys understand. Try as we might, we use things all the time without really knowing how they work. And programming can be the same way. Even if we code for a living, we can make it do the thing without necessarily understanding the underlying logic. So let's go deep into the foundation of Linux itself. Bash applies to you if you're on Ubuntu, Mint, Arch, Fedora, really most distros have it running by default, even Mac OS X. So with a few exceptions, if you have the console up, you're using Bash. Bash stands for Born Again Shell, which was the GNU response to replace the one Stephen Bourne wrote in the 70s. You can check the man page on Bash, or you could run head first into a brick wall for the same effect. Let me spell it out this way. Bash is a shell of Unix. A shell is a program that gives an interface to the operating system. It can be a graphical user interface like GNOME is to Linux Mint, or Unity is to Ubuntu. Or it could be a command line interface like Bash is. So Bash is among a few great CLIs. As we type commands into the terminal, Bash is responsible for interpreting those commands and making the magic happen. Now that magic can come in many forms, from copying files, running programs, piping, output, and tons more. Bash even keeps a history of all the commands you've entered, so you can check to see when you drank that entire case of Red Bull, what exactly went through your head. Oh, and don't worry, I know the scope of Bash is huge, so I'll just talk about in this video some key elements just to get you started. Okay, so here we have the bash command prompt showing, and it's not so scary after all. I'm highlighting Falcon. This is the user. You'll always see a user and host uh, when you type commands in the terminal. And if you go to the GUI section of that, you'll see Falcon as the user settings. Typically, you only have one user, but if you deal with server situations, you may have a whole bunch. And the device we're on is Nixie. I don't know why I named my computer after myself. I guess it was a momentary lapse of sanity. But if you go to details, again, the GUI will show you all the stuff about your device, your computer. I'm running an old version of Ubuntu. Yes, I know. But anyway, there's that. Now you see your user and your host, and then a tilde. And the tilde means that you're in your home directory. And just to verify this, you can do PWD, it's a good command, you print your working directory, and you'll see that we're in home. And finally, the dollar sign indicates what type of user you're logged in as. If you type sudo su dash uh, and type in your password, you will be running as root, and I don't recommend if you're watching a tutorial like this that you ever run as root, especially not typing this command, oh god, I did it, no, no, no. In fact, Ubuntu says it's really bad too, so of course my tutorial is good for all of the Bash OS's, so don't worry, this Ubuntu is of course just an example. When you type a line into the terminal and press enter, you're executing a command or a program. The XKCD webcomic Make Me a Sandwich is an example of the make command. Though I still maintain that XKCD should have used sudo bang bang, because bang bang would reference the previous command and add sudo before it, and it just sounds much cooler. Sudo bang bang! But I digress. Bang bang is one of the event designators. I love them, and I will go into them more later. If you want to know about events now though, check the below bar, but right now I want to break down a command so you can understand it better. A simple shell command has two parts. You have the program which is being executed, so I'm doing touch, and its arguments. So we have file one, file two, file three. The command and each argument are separated by spaces, and I know argument sounds kind of innocuous, but I promise you'll get used to it. Heading back over to the GUI version of the file manager, you will see that in fact these files that I touched or created do exist, and yay, we just executed a command. In next week's video, I'll be covering shell navigation and essentials in the command line, so you don't want to miss out on that. 
Granted, we haven't even skimmed the surface of variables, script chopping, if statements, and all that. That'll be for another segment, if that's what you want. I wouldn't really want our heads to explode from the sheer volume of bash commands now, would we? Nope. Personally, some of my favorite commands are pretty easy, and that's the badassness of Bash. It can be as complicated or as simple as you let it be. So what are some of your favorite commands? Let me know in a comment below, and be sure to check back next innocuous time period because I'm overseas and time periods are weird and I'm trying, so it's getting really dark. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. As you may have guessed by what's behind me, I made it to the Philippines. And there's no real Wi-Fi here, I've been having to churn data through my phone. It would have been slow, but I actually have UC Browser to thank for that. And guess what? They have a new version! 9.5 just came out and they've made your downloading experience even faster. In a race with Opera and Chrome, UC wins by a landslide. That need for speed continues as you explore online, so UC Browser uses a unique mobile cloud acceleration to compress up to 90% of website data. This means you can browse blazingly fast and still keep your data usage low. See for yourself, no other mobile phone browser even comes close. So those are just a few great features you have to look forward to in UC Browser. Check out the below bar and after this video to find out more, and it's completely free and open source, so what do you have to lose?